Hello learners, in this lecture we will see how the infrared radiation is done. How the infrared radiation is done for the curing of a concrete. So curing by infrared is done in a very cold climatic region, especially in the European countries. It is seen that much more rapid gain of strength can be obtained even with the steam curing. The rapid initial rise of temperature does not cause any decrease in the ultimate had, as it does in the case of the steam curing. In the steam curing, what happens? The ultimate strength is going to get decreased a bit. But whereas in infrared radiation, that will not happen. The normal operative temperature what we have here is around 90 degrees Celsius. So this is how we do. Let us say you have taken a concrete cube here or a concrete specimen like a beam. And you have to put these two kind of a capacitor and you have to switch on the machine. So as a result of that, the rays are formed infrared. And due to this, what will happen? the curing is going to happen, right? Yeah. The next one, what we have is electrical curing. This method is also used in a very cold climatic region. In this method, the concrete is cured by passing an electric current, AC current, concrete itself between the two electrodes, either buried in or applied to the surface of the concrete. The operation is prevented by using impermeable rubber membrane on the top surface of the concrete. The duration of electrical curing should be about 48 hours at the temperature of 50 degree Celsius or 36 hours at the temperature of 70 degree Celsius. By electrical curing, 28 day strength can be obtained in around three days. This method is expensive and not used in India. And usually electrical curing and all, we don't use it here because we don't have that scarcity of water. And since we are not that cold country, for us the normal curing like the ponding and all is sufficient for us. Yeah, so you can see it here, right? This is a kind of a experiment what they're conducting in the lab. But you can see how it is done. They're casting a beam here and inside the beam, they are given this electrical connection. You can see it here, right? See everywhere with the help of this alternative current, they've inserted the electrode into this so that they can try to check exactly how much amount of, you know, curing will happen. I think they're conducting a kind of experiment here that is uh, to understand how your normal curing and how your electrical curing will happen and how much strength gain is going to happen. You can see here as well. They've taken a concrete beam and from two sides they've attached an electrode to that. And this is connected to a AC current and in turn it is connected to the electrical supply. And in this way, you try to pass the electric current. As a result of that, the curing is going to happen. So next we have is called a self-curing. So it is self-explanatory in the self-curing. It has been pointed out earlier that curing does not mean only the application of the word. It means also the creation of the condition for the promotion of uninterrupted and progressive hydration. It's not that always from externally you have to give water. A main intention is to avoid the loss of water which is inside the concrete. So you can find the other way where you can do for, where you can go for self-curing. It is also pointed out that quantity of water normally mixed for making the concrete is sufficient to hydrate the cement content. Concrete in which the mixing water is restricted by means of some chemical compound to go out from the concrete body is also known as is known as self-curing concrete. So coming to the mechanism, how it works, you can understand that. Uh, yeah, the compound, the, the compound molecule is primarily hydrophobic in nature with hydrophilic terminal group. Again, there involves a chemistry here. Hydrophilic terminal group attaches itself to the film of the bleeding water, while the long hydrophobic chain maintains a vertical orientation away from the bleeding water. When the water molecules do not possess the sufficient energy to escape through the hydrophobic layer, which results into the quick reduction in the operation of the loss. So what actually we are trying to do is whatever water, they, whatever water is there in the concrete, we should not allow that water to get operated, right? So in order to do that, we can try to go with the self-curing concrete where the compound molecules are primarily attached to the layer of the concrete. So that what will happen, there is no operation happening. Yeah, so what all compound you can use? You can make use of synthetic resins like wax, acrylic, and chlorinated rubber. So these are the different compounds what you can apply on the surface of the concrete so that there is no evaporation of the water. So the last thing that we need to understand is about the period of curing. Usually, the strength, whatever we are speaking, that will be gained at the end of the 20 days. If you're going for normal concrete and normal curing, so we usually consider the 20 days period of curing and you can see at the end of 28 days how much strength you are going to get 
around it's 100 percent let us say 95 to 99 percentage of the strength will be achieved at the end of 28 days if you are doing a one day curing then you are going to get the 16 percentage of the strength if you are going for a three day curing you are going to get the 40 percent strength of the concrete if you are going for seven days you will get around 67 percent right so again concrete goes on gaining the strength for at the end of three months six months one year and so on but for us the first 20 day strength is important because after that the gain of a strength is very slow if you see it through here no see from 16 it has gone to 40 40 to 67 from 67 to 100 so there is an increase of 33 here there's an increase of 27 here and there is an increase of around 24 here but after that you can see the increase is only 22 from 22 to 46 here it is again 24 from here again it is only 11 so that is why after that after three months six months it's a very slow increase what we are getting but up to 28 days the increase is very speed and that is why usually we do the curing of a concrete up to 20 days and after 20 days we do the testing on that to make sure it has gained sufficient strength right so try to understand this how the period of curing is uh, depending on the percentage gain yeah so that's it all about the curing we have understood the different types of curing how it has to be done what is bonding what is spraying what is steam curing uh, accelerated there is something called accelerated curing accelerated curing is nothing but where we try to increase the speed of the curing so that the strength gain will happen more so steam curing is also a type of a accelerated curing right so un under the steam curing we have seen what all different ways of steam curing we can do high pressure low pressure we have seen infrared curing we have seen electrical curing and all so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you